Welcome back to the Rust Intermediate tutorial, and today we're jumping right into traits. So if you caught the last video, we got a little taste of traits when we were working with generics. And basically what a trait does is it allows you to associate certain behaviors and capabilities amongst different data types, usually structs or enums or what have you, but it can be applicable to a lot of things. If you guys have ever used interfaces before in a language, maybe like Java or something like that, these are very, very similar. There's just some key differences that we'll talk about. So first of all, to define a trait, you just use the trait keyword. And we're going to define a trait of vehicle. And we're going to have two functions in there that are going to return strings. Now, as you can see, and very similar to interfaces, these functions have no body. They don't have a body because you don't necessarily have to define your function outright. Like when you have no body here and you're saying like, yeah, it's just got to return a string. Then anything that implements this vehicle trait can define its own function. Like you, you can provide a body if you want, like, let's say turn ignition. I'm getting creative here. It's going to return a string and that string is going to be, Vroom, vroom. So you can have functions that return stuff, but now because we've already declared this function body, we can't write our own. Like we have to do this. So let's talk about what that looks like here. If we go ahead and build a struct of a car and we want to say the color is going to be a string, just have some kind of attribute in there. And then we say implement vehicle for car this is how you cast a trait onto a struct or something else you use imp and then you use for and so now we get this red underscore here because we're missing forward and backward in the implementation so we already told it that like hey these have to return a string but you have to define them but if you notice that third method that we put isn't on there that turn ignition one. And that's because automatically this car already has it. So before I even define anything, take a look at this. If I just go ahead and type print line and I want to do like a car turn ignition, you can see that I don't get any errors, but we already, we haven't described anything in this implementation part here. But that's because as soon as you implement vehicle for car, no matter what you define for the other functions forward, backward that we have to define, this one comes automatically. It's already built out with the body and this never changes. So this is not going to throw us an error. But if we tried to do like our other functions, let's say forward, we don't get an error, but we don't have anything implemented for it yet. So to do that, all we have to do is just type the function out in here. So let's say forward, going to return a string and the string is going to be driving my car forward. And then we'll do backward as well. I think you can guess what that's probably going to be. We're just going to say backing my car up. And now we can successfully print each of these as their own functions. Now, something to note here is these are associated functions because we're not referencing the struct itself. And I'll cover that in a minute. But one of the key features of a trait here is we can apply this trade to multiple structs. So if I go ahead and I add a new struct for a truck, and again, I'm just going to do like a color string. And then we go ahead and implement vehicle for truck as well. And I'll copy this stuff, save you guys the pain. And we just change this to truck instead of car. All perfectly valid. And you can see that we'll be able to actually go ahead and provide each of these for truck as well. And we'll print these out and we'll see what they look like. I'm sure you guys can guess what it's going to look like. 
we'll do a cargo run. And as our output, we're going to get as expected vroom vroom for each struct, right? So it doesn't change. Vroom vroom is the same. But when we ran it for the car, it's car. And when we ran it for the truck, it's truck. So I know it's not super overwhelming, but this is a powerful capability. And just like the last video where we were using traits to kind of like restrict our generic data type, there's a ton of stuff you can do with traits for like object oriented stuff inheritance, abstraction, all kinds of things like that. However, one thing to note is I mentioned that traits are a little bit different than interfaces. And that's because you can't do something like this. You can't just declare attributes in a trait. Even if it's public, what have you, you can't do it. It's only functions or methods. So that's like pretty much the key difference between an interface. Other than that though, they operate pretty much the same. So now let's go ahead and show you guys. I'm just gonna make a quick copy here. And I'm gonna put all this in a new file. I'm gonna show you how we can do traits that are self-referencing. So instead of associated functions, these would be methods. And all you have to really do is just add the self-reference. And once you do that, this becomes its own self-referencing trait. And so these become methods instead of functions. Now, all that really looks like in the implementation is you have to be referencing the self again. And now we can just do something like this. We can say string from format. We use the format macro. And we'll go ahead and just do self.color. And we could do that again down here as well. And I'm going to quickly fast forward while I add this to each of these. And so now that I've added self to each of these, these obviously become methods now and they're self referencing. And it's cool because in the trait we said, yeah, these methods here are going to reference self. Like they're going to be methods of that struct itself. But the vehicle trait isn't the object. You know what I mean? Like, we're referencing self in the trait here, but we don't have an object declared yet. We don't have an object until we implement the trait on an actual object, like a struct or an enum. And that's still completely fine. Like you can totally do that. And that will allow you to implement methods as well as associated functions. So you can see that we're getting some errors down here. Now we left turned ignition alone. It doesn't have self in it. So that's still an associated method or an associated function. So you still call it with this syntax here. But in order to use those other ones, we now have to declare an object first. So if we just say let car equal car, and I'll do the color, I don't know, I'll do like string from green. And now we can say with the car syntax, we can use car dot. And I'm sure you can guess what we're going to do for truck as well. And there you go. So now let's print this out. Let's see what cargo run gives us. There we go. So it's doing the same stuff as before, but this time we have this self referencing attribute in here. And these are, as you can see, methods. And that is in a nutshell, how you do traits. And we talked about in the last video, how these could be used for generics. They can also be used to create objects that all share certain behaviors, which comes in really handy with stuff like building APIs or building like basically any object oriented program. So take note of this stuff. Again, it's all on GitHub. And if you have any questions, drop it in the comments. Thanks.